All right, everybody, welcome back to Edge of the Rabbit Hole. I'm author and ghostorian Mike Ricksecker. With me, as always, is my co-hostess, Vanessa Hogel, and down in the chat room, our chat shenanigator, Shauna. Back with us tonight, Andrea Perrin, Steve Deshami, co-host of The Dead Files with us, Ricky Rocket from Poison, yes, from Poison, Brian Cano, Alexandra Holzer, Ken Gerhardt is in the house. Oh, it's always my pleasure. It truly is. You know, we've been so connected since we met and then you brought Vanessa into my life too which is delightful uh it is always my pleasure to join you you know to me when people say what do you do I say well I work with a woman that's like the sixth sense mm -hmm. that's simple I just do my shit that's pragmatic and you know black and white and hopefully it coincides and helps her come to a conclusion on how to fix it and I love scary stuff I always have our band happens to be a positive party band but right. if it were, if it was up to me the band probably would have been a little bit different um, <laughs> but, but, but like i grew up like everybody else had wilt chamberlain on their walls and and uh and Terry Bradshaw and I and I had Bella Lugosi. I mean you know I mean, yes. you became a new best friend there in Cedar Rapids when you made the statement that you know Four years, 60 countries, was it uh, however many continents or was it, well, wait a second, was it 40 countries and six continents or whatever it was that. Got it right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You uh, had not gotten possessed once, let alone twice in one episode. And it was right. like, I like this girl. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just going to go right ahead right now and just. What is it, like over 150 books? It's 145. 145. I believe 11 okay. went into reprints. Um, and, you know, and he obviously covered many subjects, you know, in psychics, mediumship, you're dealing with witches, the craft, the occult, UFOs, you know, um, spiritualism, healing, you know, and then he wrote also fiction, you know, it was an amazing writer, it was a creative too. How do spirits do it without a physical body that we're aware of? Well, okay, can be considered a psychic impression. It's a psychic impression onto our digital recording media. Now, if it's possible for a bodiless spirit to implant a vibration onto a recorder, then why can't we do it with a mental impulse? Because of the lack of those molars, God. his diet... You know what, Vanessa? Vanessa, let me interrupt you. That's a great point you just made. Because of the lack of those molars, that those cheeks are going to sink in on an yes. image, aren't they? They are going. They are going to sink in on an image. <laughs> well, Mike, I got to thank. I got to thank you, Mike. You bringing me on the show, and I learned. I learned. I learned more from you both than you learned from me. Yeah, you know, little, little, it has its downside. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, somebody that says fuck as much as I do. I think more. <laughs> I, a little bit. A little bit. He's he's out fucking me. That sounded so bad. <laughs> I'm so bad. Uh, it was just like she was watching the house and watching the house and listening. And, you know, a lot of activity occurred right around that spot, including one of the most intense experiences that I ever had. You know, the Pleistocene, the Ice Age, ended about ten to 12,000 years ago. And there were a lot of amazing animals during that time period. The woolly mammoths, the woolly rhinos, saber-toothed cats, giant sloths. A lot of those things, you know, the, the Earth's climate changed so much that they, they died out, presumably. Um, but, you know, there, there are reports of things that look like some of those different, you know, Pleistocene-type animals. It's awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> I like it up here. The good thing for you guys watching uh, tonight is you can see the flooding behind us. Yep. So this yeah. is a historic moment. We had bad flooding here. I mean, it happens every year, but uh, this is the third time the flood wall's gotten pulled out downtown uh, mm -hmm. to save the city. And you know, and actually, it's interesting more into mediumship than anything hmm. else. You know, um, and it's mostly the women that I'm connecting with. You know, so um, no offense, Mike. No, none taken. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, damn. I don't know how loud this is going to be. <clears throat> okay, I'm not sure my voice is up to this. I'm going to try this. This is a, somebody, Vanessa, you asked about drumming and, your, and singing your loved ones to the next world. I don't know. I just feel, comp you know, I feel like I should share this. I'm going to share it. It's one of the favorites of the my spiritual group. Whoa. How 
was that hitting you emotionally seeing your brother go through this? Um, well, it was, um, I really had to, you know, buckle up and get in there because I didn't want anything taking over him. Uh, I felt extremely protective. You're driving through these really narrow streets and you look up and you see 12 year olds standing on rooftops holding AK 47 yep. at your convoy, just following you in their sights. Mm -hmm. You know, and we had to make a deal with the godfather of the favela to not kill us. Next one is um, nine of, I don't know what they all are, staffs? Is that, is that one? That of wands. 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 I guess wands. Okay. Is it a wand? I guess he's. It looks like he's holding a staff. That's why I said that. But yeah. I guess that would be a wand. Okay. See how little I know. <laughs> and the lights went off. We're in complete darkness in the king's chamber. And we thought, right, this is a rare moment. Let's come. Let's go and do what we've been trained to do, which is clean up the place. And um, I began to sort of tune into the actual space, which is another method that we do to find out the resonance of the building. And suddenly, as these three people are my witness, about 30 people came out of the stones, dressed in this, these beautiful white costumes, surrounded us. Uh, they, they could have been about eight and a half feet tall. They were quite tall. And uh, you can't see their faces. Their cows are all the way up down to their nose. And um, they just bowed, and I bowed back. You know, I tried to buy the house. Um, Did and, you? Uh, a few years back, yeah. Cool. Um, and I still would like to have it. If I had it, it would be an Airbnb. I mean, <laughs> That's I, I, don't, awesome. I, I don't think I'm going to move <laughs> back east and bring my kids and them go to school and go, yeah, I live in the Amityville house. You know, <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not going to do that. Thing. Then you get a lot of nutbags that are like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm seeing... Pink elephants, all right. How many quaaludes a day you take? You know, they, so there's that side of it. Um, did they even make quaaludes anymore? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, you I'm missed it, Vanessa. Myself. You you missed it um, on Beyond the Shadows, I think it was last week, where we talked about getting a Haunted Road Media bus and just driving around and picking everybody up. And, you know, whether it's to the Paracon or other haunted locations, we'll pick Rob up, you know, and we'll, just, we'll go that. someplace. <laughs> We need to do that. That that needs to happen. That's a big bus route. No, uh -huh. a big bus route. <laughs> <laughs> that well, would they be went, awesome and the thing is, they wanted me to buy a bus. I'm like, I'm like, I, I was thinking about just chartering one and putting Haunted Road Media on the side of it. I, <laughs> to buy a bus, I don't know about that. Legitimately, after we moved her out of that apartment, um, we, we validated the haunting. There was a man whose whose street moniker was Snake, and his son's name was Nicholas, and it was a murder suicide. Um, that took place in the bathroom where my autistic son was communicating yeah. with this thing so and the great thing was is the research that she had um allowed me to actually correct the timeline that i had and allow me to date the house back even farther and actually give maybe to some theories about the house that some truths about that you know i think steve you're probably just like a big teddy bear to them right <laughs> yeah basically a big flat Fluffy teddy bear. <laughs> I meant it in a good way, you know. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with fluff. Delightful. Always a pleasure to join you both. And I'll come back anytime you ask. You know I will. And I think in the end, we're going to have to discover that we are the gods we've been waiting for. Have a fantastic right. evening. Take care. You too, guys. Bye.